Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, Will It Build? Hello, and welcome to Will It Build, your favorite build series on YouTube. Today, we are looking at a build that is primarily focused on DPS and blowing up bosses as quickly as possible. Previously, we looked at builds that were a little more focused on healing, builds that were a little more focused on survivability. Today, we're getting back to the high damage, high DPS builds. And we're starting with a build aptly named Return of the King. For those who don't know much about me, Lord of the Rings is my favorite piece of media anywhere on the planet. And those who have been watching the channel for a while also know that one of the fan favorite builds that we've ever done on the YouTube channel is the Young Ahamkara's Spine Solar Hunter build that we did a while back that unfortunately caught a nerf. But today, according to Yep Nope 700, we're going to get on with this build. We're going to see if it is in fact the return of the king. We're also going to do a giveaway in today's video. Probably going to go with the Tabula Rasa emblem for the giveaway for today's video. I'll talk more about how to enter after we get this build set up. They say, after some longing for the old young Ahamkara spine, I finally decided to try and bring it back, and I think I succeeded. This build is the epitome of glass cannon in Destiny 2. For those who don't know what glass cannon is, it is basically a video game term for you are very squishy, but you do a ridiculous amount of damage. They say this build is the epitome of a glass cannon in Destiny 2. However, with some skill and mastering, you'll turn yourself into just the cannon. So you're gonna have a ton of damage and you're still gonna be quite tanky, according to them. For the subclass, we're going with Gunslinger, obviously Solar Hunter. For the exotic armor, they're recommending the Young Ahamkara's Spine. If we look at the Young Ahamkara's Spine as well, take a quick inspect, things have changed a little bit. Increases trip mine, grenade duration, and blast radius. And you now gain trip mine grenade energy from ability final blows as opposed to simply ability hits as it previously did. If I recall correctly, I believe that Young Ahamkara's Spine gave 33% trip mine grenade energy every time that we had an ability hit. So if we come over and just confirm, yep, we still see solar ability kills grant 33% trip mine grenade energy. If we look at everything else, we intrinsically get fastball. We're also gonna get 14% increased explosion damage. Explosion length and width are increased to 14 meters. Explosions no longer deal self damage, which is a massive part of this exotic. And if we look at the rest of the build that they suggest, it says for weapons, they're hooking us up with Dragon's Breath and any high fire rate incandescent weapons. So what I'm going with over here, I've got my Callus's mini tool with threat detector and incandescent, the crafted version, of course, various incandescent uh, primary weapons that you can run. If you don't really know which one you want to run, or you maybe don't have one yet. If you go to D2 Foundry, uh, oh, you can search by, so it says trait instead of perks, but if we do trait and then incandescent, let's say we even want to go as specific as the weapon. Let's say we only want to look for a submachine gun. We can do just that. A couple of other options there. This of course is incandescent demolitionist, which honestly I think might be a better option. We've also got dragon's breath. As you can see here, I do not have the catalyst. Um, typically in my experience, Dragon's Breath without the Catalyst is still pretty good. Uh, so the Catalyst for Dragon's Breath says time between fuel stacks is decreased to three seconds, reaching times five after 15 seconds, which I don't think is that big of a deal because typically if you're running a solar build, you're getting all of the fuel stacks from ignitions anyway, as opposed to just waiting for it to come back. The question of, hey, Mac, if I don't have the Catalyst, is this build still going to work for me? I'm confident that it will, but we'll be able to answer that for sure. Uh, while we're looking at this, I just realized I've hit level 100 on the season pass. So we can actually use the ornament for it. As far as aspects go, they're hooking us up with knock them down and gunpowder gamble. So we'll go ahead and get that ready to go. Gunpowder gamble, obviously very fun. Got knock them down as well, which is going to make it so that when we're radiant, final blows with our throwing knife will refund our throwing knife itself. So we can infinitely throw throwing knives. And it's also going to increase the capabilities of all of our supers. Also got Gunpowder Gamble so that eventually as we get kills with our solar abilities, we're going to get 
that gunpowder gamble that we can throw. Basically, an ignition on a stick, great for unstoppable champions, great for damaging a ton of enemies or blowing up a pack of ads and creating a big chain of explosions. It doesn't really seem like they mention any specific abilities that we're supposed to be using. Um, obviously, we should be using trip mine grenades since we're using young Ahamkara's spine, but it looks like the super and the melee ability are up to us. So I'm going to stick with knife trick because it's my favorite melee ability for Solar Hunter. And then for our super, I think we're going to go blade barrage. I think it just syncs up the best with knock them down. I feel like Golden Gun isn't that great unless you're running Celestial Nighthawk. So since we're obviously not, we're going with uh, Young Hamkara's Spine instead. I think we'll go with Blade Barrage for this one. As far as fragments go, we've got the Ember of Ashes, which if I recall correctly, increases all Squirt Stack applications by 50%. Fun fact, this also works for Dragon's Breath and makes Dragon's Breath an absolute menace. This is one of the main reasons that Dragon's Breath is much better on solar subclasses compared to non-solar subclasses. It just procs the ignitions and auto reloading of the Dragon's Breath so much more frequently. So I love Ember of Ashes here. Also got us hooked up with the Ember of Singeing and the Ember of Torches. Ember of Torches uh, obviously going to be a way for us to get Radiant um, and a way for us to infinitely refund our knife through Knock Him Down. Ember of Sinjin is going to make it so that our class ability recharges faster when we scorch targets, which we're going to be scorching targets a lot with this build. We got the Trip Mine, we got the Knife Trick, uh, we got a ton of ways to scorch enemies. And then finally, they've got us hooked up with the Ember of Mercy, which is the one that I'm slightly skeptical of. So the Ember of Mercy is gonna make it so that when we pick up a fire sprite, we get restoration, and we re when we revive an ally, us and them get restoration. My problem with this fragment is, really see anything that is generating fire sprites for us. The only thing that I saw that might be able to generate fire sprites for us is if we have the catalyst on Dragon's Breath, but even so, that doesn't really make sense because you're not typically getting a lot of kills with Dragon's Breath. You're mainly using it for boss DPS or maybe you're using it on a champion. You're not really using it to kill a bunch of trash mobs. So I'm not too sure about the Ember of Mercy. Maybe there's something I'm missing, um, but I imagine if you know my preconceived notions do hold true throughout the beginning of the run, I think we are gonna end up swapping this out for something else. I have something in mind of what I'm gonna wanna swap it to. Uh, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, as far as our armor mods go, definitely need to take a look at those. They say for the helmet, we've got hands-on, heavy ammo finder, and harmonic siphon. Hands-on, gain bonus super energy on melee kills, which is interesting. We got young Ahamkara spine going. I would think that we would, we would probably want to go with ashes to assets since it's more of a grenade focus build. But I can see the use of hands-on since we do have knock them down and ember of torches. So we have theoretically infinite throwing knives if we get kills. So... I can see the justification for that. Uh, they also said we are going to be going with Harmonic Siphon and Heavy Ammo Finder. Arms, we've got Heavy Handed, so another melee-based mod in Impact Induction Times 2, um, which the, th this is kind of an interesting setup in my opinion. It seems like we're going with Young Ahamkara's Spine, which is all about trip mine grenades, but all of our mods are going into melee stuff. So um, heavy handed, making orbs of power on powered melee final blows. We got the hands on, so we get more super energy on melee final blows. And we got the double impact induction as a way to reduce our grenade cooldown, which is interesting to me because I feel like this is a bit overkill. The main thing that's gonna be reducing our grenade duration is just gonna be getting solar kills through Young Ahamkara's spine. So we'll see how much this impact induction is actually necessary as we get going. Uh, for the chest, we've got solar reserves times two. They're saying no damage resistances at all. We want to go all the way in to, to the reserves. And in fact, I think this is something they may have missed. We don't actually have to run solar reserves times two, um, which is three energy apiece, costs six total energy. We can instead run harmonic reserves, which only costs two, which means we can run three of them. So we can run even more reserves mods and get the same effect because we're, of course, on a solar subclass. As far as the boots go, we got recuperation. Recuperation replenishes health each time you pick up an orb. Also got better already and absolution. Better already is another healing mod, which is kind of interesting to me. So we're replenishing a chunk of health every time we pick up an orb and we're beginning our health regeneration every time we pick up an orb, which seems a little overkill in my opinion, but we're going to roll with it. Um, also giving us absolution so that all of our ability cooldowns, uh, we get a little bit, a small chunk of them back every time we pick up an orb. I feel like we're, we would really benefit from having a harmonic scavenger somewhere in here. 
it's only a one stat cost mod and it really uh, juices up the amount of ammo that we would be getting for our dragon's breath off of the heavy bricks on the ground. So I feel like we would really benefit from swapping at least one of these two mods out for the harmonic scavenger, but I want to roll with what they recommended first. We've then got bomber, powerful attraction, and distribution on the class item. Another surprise here, I'm surprised we're not taking reaper uh, on this. I feel like with how much we're going to be using our class ability, the ember of singeing you know, restoring it more quickly every time we scorch enemy targets. I feel like we're going to be dodging a lot with this build, and I feel like uh, I'm surprised we're not taking advantage of how often we're dodging and getting a bunch of orbs out of that through Reaper. Let's see, Bomber, Powerful Attraction, Distribution. Powerful Attraction on... Or sorry, distribution on, powerful attraction on. We are not utilizing armor charge in any capacity throughout this build. I feel like armor charge is so, 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 so powerful. feel like we definitely want to integrate it somewhere into this build. So I feel like we're going to make a lot of changes to the mod setup as we get going with this video. I think we're also going to maybe make a change to the fragment department. But of course, I want to test out what they recommended first before we start making changes. For the artifact mods, they recommend a couple of things, but they say that they are all optional, none are necessary. So this build will carry forward to future seasons when we do lose these artifact mods in like four months. Still got a very long season ahead of us, but Kindling Trigger, Flint Striker, Heart of the Flame, and Rays of Precision. Also for stat prioritizations, they say go Resilience, then Mobility, then Discipline. Let's get into the coil and answer the question, will it build? But real quick, let's talk about a setup upgrade that you deserve. When I was a console gamer, I thought PCs were just a fad, but after 10 years of gaming on one, I have never looked back. With a PC, you just get way more storage space, significantly higher frame rates, and much better performance. So why not treat yourself to a Starforge system? The best PCs in the universe, built at premium quality, and with a full two-year warranty. Head to my link in the description to go buy yours now, so you can thank yourself later. I'm really curious to see how many total rockets we can hold in Dragon's Breath with the triple harmonic reserves as well. I think standard, you can hold seven. I am so excited to get back to using Young Ahamkara's Spine, one of my favorite exotics ever. The way that the old Young Ahamkara's Spine worked is it was based off of ability hits, but you could only, at least in the case of the Trip Mine, it would only count. It didn't matter how many enemies you hit with the Trip Mine, the maximum amount of refund you could get with a single trip mine was 33%, uh, even if you hit multiple enemies. So I'm curious if now that's based on kills, if we kill multiple enemies with the same trip mine, will that give us more energy? So we get 33% right there because we killed one enemy and we can start, you know, using throwing knives to get additional ability energy back in the trip mine grenade. So that'll be something to experiment with as well. So I kind of see the angle for impact induction a little bit because right there when we threw our triple throwing knife at the knight, typically we would only get 33% of our grenade back, um, but killing the knight plus the impact induction proccing actually gave us a total of 50% of our grenade back. That in theory, you could get your trip mine grenade back with two throwing knife kills as opposed to three, which I think is pretty cool. Let's get that trip mine out. And then now we have our Gunpowder Gamble. And it looks like Gunpowder Gamble indeed does give us Trip Mine Grenade Energy back, which is very, very fantastic. Now I want to test and see if I kill multiple enemies with this Trip Mine Grenade. Is it going to count for multiple procs? So let's try and get both of these guys with the same Trip Mine. So it still only counts one time. Uh, it does look like, however, that just like the way that Young Ahamkara's Spine worked previously, you kill multiple enemies with the melee, it actually will count multiple times. I think it's because each of the daggers that you throw counts as a separate entity, and so each entity can proc Young Ahamkara's Spine separately, I would imagine is what's going on. Um, and the nice thing is, even if we don't kill something with our melee ability, uh, we can just hit our dodge, which we're going to have back so often. As you can see, my dodge is recharging super fast. Um, thanks to that Ember of Singeing, every time we scorch an enemy, we go ahead and get a chunk of it back. We can basically fuel our, uh, fuel our melee ability an unlimited amount. This is cool with Gunpowder Gamble because we've got our trip mines that are going to be doing a ton of work, plus our Gunpowder Gamble that is going to be doing a ton of work. But I'm curious if 
since Young Ahamkara's spine makes it so that you can't damage yourself with trip mine grenades, I wonder if that also works for Gunpowder Gamble because Gunpowder Gamble is in the grenade slot. I think there's no way that's going to work. Okay, that's a bummer. <laughs> that would have been, that that honestly would have been life changing. Uh, this is such an ability spam focus build. Get the gunpowder gamble. And it looks like similar to the trip mine grenade, even if the gunpowder gamble kills multiple enemies, it will still only proc for the young Ahamkara spine trip mine grenade refresh once. So the only thing that will allow you to get multiple procs of Young Ahamkara's Spine, if you kill multiple enemies with the same ability, is the Throwing Knife ability, because each of those knives seems to be its own entity that can proc Young Ahamkara's Spine itself. All right, so here's our first Rally Flag. Let's see how much ammo our Dragon's Breath can carry. It looks like we get up to... Wow, so it is 10 rockets if you have triple reserves, up from a base of 7, which is pretty ridiculous. I think that is enough to last the entirety of literally any DPS phase. So let's start getting some throwing knife kills. That'll allow us to get our gunpowder gamble and allow us to get our trip mine grenade back a little bit more quickly. I kind of like the impact induction because it makes it... I think the reason the impact induction is there, you're not always going to want to use your throwing knives on an enemy that you're going to kill. Sometimes you're just going to want to throw your throwing knives at a boss because you know that that's going to basically allow you to get your throwing knives back thanks to the ember of Sinjin. you're going to scorch the enemy you get, get your class ability back more quickly they can just dodge next to them to get another set of knives um which means you can just continuously proc impact induction so i think the point of the double impact induction is it's the build submitter's answer to the problem that arose when Young Ahamkara's spine got nerfed, which is, hey, what do we do against tanky enemies now since we have to actually kill enemies to get the trip mine grenade back? Um, and so the answer is, well, just scorch them a lot, get your throwing knives consistently, and hit them with impact induction, and you'll be good. I can get a dragon's breath in the ground too, so we start wiping out some of these ads. We absolutely melted this boss. And I still have eight rockets. So I could have melted him like 10 other times. Nice. So yeah, I think what this build aims to do is it aims to replicate the same feeling that Young Ahamkara's Spine used to have, where Young Ahamkara's Spine allowed you to just endlessly chuck abilities at bosses, you know, grenade, melee, dodge, melee, grenade, etc., etc. I think this is trying to replicate that same feeling, and it's just using a different mod setup. So before we enter into the next room, let me implement some of those ideas. Step one is with our fragments. Previously, I said I wasn't too sure about the Ember of Mercy because there's no way that we're creating fire sprites with this build. I really want a way to get restoration. Mm, there's, there's no real way to consistently get healing with this build. So I don't know if there's a great way to improve the healing on this build uh, beyond maybe just having the recuperation to get some healing on orb pickup. If this recuperation is the only way that we're going to be able to consistently heal, then I want to invest a little bit more into orb of power generation, which means as I alluded to previously, I definitely do want to swap out this distribution for a reaper since we are dodging so much. I want even another way to make orbs. Um, I also think that I'm gonna want to get rid of this powerful attraction and instead go time dilation. The reason I wanna go time dilation is because since we have so much invested in the solar weapon department, I want to invest a little bit more into increasing the damage of those solar weapons. So first things first, I'm gonna swap out that better already for a harmonic scavenger, which is only a one cost mod and is gonna increase the amount of dragon's breath ammo that we have at all times it's gonna make it so you basically always have infinite dragon's breath ammo which adds to the glass cannon theme of this build and i also want to drop the absolution to pick up a solar weapon surge that is why i had that time dilation on down here i think you could keep the powerful attraction on here if you really wanted to but i like the time dilation instead so i can have longer timers when i go into a boss dps phase of 
that solar weapon scavenger so that our dragon's breath is going to be doing 10 percent extra damage for the entirety of the phase if we pick up enough orbs with all that taken care of i think i do want to swap out this emperor of mercy because the only time this is giving us any benefit whatsoever is when we revive a guardian uh which i don't think is happening often enough for, for us to justify giving it a slot what i think would be much better in this slot is instead going with the Ember of Benevolence so that every time we apply Restoration Cure, or for the case of this build, Radiant, thanks to the Ember of Torches, to our allies, we'd increase Grenade, Melee, and Class Ability Regeneration. So we get increased Ability Regenerations on all of our abilities. Anytime we hit an enemy with our Throwing Knives, and our allies are somewhere in the vicinity to receive the Radiant Benefit, which is pretty much always. So I think this will be a much better Fragment. Um, I think we'll get a lot more use out of this, and it'll play a lot more into our spamming ability loop theme that we've got going on here. So, just like that, dodging right there, we're going to get the Ember of Benevolence procced just like that, and we don't even have to necessarily sacrifice our melee ability for it because we get it right back since we killed an enemy with it. Now, oh, wait a minute. I just had an idea. Wait, that grenade's going to last... Oh, never mind. I think every single person currently watching knows exactly what my idea is. So let's get our trip mine grenade back. Go get him. <laughs> oh my god. Perfect. Uh, in terms of practicality, probably not that useful. I'm just not realizing I haven't mentioned how to enter the giveaway yet. Um, you know what? Here's what we'll do. Since this build is called Return of the King, and I just talked at the beginning of the video how much I love Lord of the Rings, what we'll do is, all you have to do to enter the giveaway is like the video, be subscribed to the channel, and tell me what your favorite Lord of the Rings character is down in the comments below. I feel like I can use... I feel like I can be using my Dragon's Breath a lot more since I have Heavy Ammo Finder and I have that Harmonic Scavenger. And as you can see on the left side of my screen, uh, I basically have a 10% weapon damage buff up 24-7. Um, I have three stacks of armor charge with 15 seconds apiece with basically no effort. And having a 10% weapon damage buff is just, you yeah, know, it's nice. Okay, let's find the dudes that will give us the buff so we can kill his boss. And throw a bunch of abilities at them. They're going to explode. And uh, easy as that. And then we'll hit our dodge before we... Ooh, come on, walk into that. There you go. And let's see how quickly we can decimate this boss. So we'll throw a little Dragon's Breath action. Get a Gunpowder Gamble, we'll throw our Blade Barrage. Get another Dragon's Breath on him. I'm a little low on HP, but that's okay. Get another Dragon's Breath on him. Oh my god, you know what I'm just now realizing? This week for the Coil, we have the Restorative Light Modifier, which is the one where you don't regenerate HP unless you run over these little puddles over here. That is definitely stunting the survivability of this build. Should we lift the will it build script a little bit? And take this bad boy into this week's Grandmaster Nightfall? Because, uh, I mean, hey, if it can work in a Grandmaster Nightfall, it can work in anything. I think, it'd be, I think it'd be a good time for a little change of pace. I want to see how quickly I can obliterate that meatball. Only thing I did change is I went on and threw a little disorienting GL on. One of my favorites. The one concern is that enemies are significantly tankier in Grandmaster Nightfalls. So I think it is going to be a little bit tougher to get ability final blows to proc our young Ahamkara's spine. I think we'll have to really make efforts to make sure we're throwing abilities at the red bar trash enemies to consistently get our refunds, which is fine. There's our gunpowder gamble right there. I mean, our trip mine 
So here's a red bar enemy here we can take advantage of. Boom. Thanks for the refund. Also get my throwing knives back there. Can go ahead and nail that guy too. Thanks, Buster. And then with our radiant buff, we can go ahead and shoot right through his shield. Let's get a dragon's breath rocket on him just for good measure. <laughs> okay. Start unloading on this unstoppable champion. We'll throw our throwing knives to get radiant. Can dodge to get it right back. And we should get our class ability back pretty quickly. I'm just going to go willy-nilly on the Dragon's Breath. I have a feeling that with my Harmonic Scavenger and my Heavy Ammo Finder and my Triple Solar Reserves, or Harmonic Reserves, rather, I feel like I'm going to have plenty of Dragon's Breath ammo to use. Get that Gunpowder Gamble in the mix. Definitely taking a lot of heat. So, going to have to play a little careful. Oh, dodge a little too far away. I'm just now realizing as well, I think the main reason for the uh, the incandescent weapon recommendation is that if I scorch enemies with the incandescent perk, that is also going to count for proccing the Ember of Sinjin. All right, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to instantly shoot the unstoppable with a Dragon's Breath rocket. I think I missed. Well, that's how it goes sometimes. All right, let's try and get some ability kills on these red bar enemies. Get a finisher on this unstoppable. Get our throwing knife kill that gets us our throwing knives back. We'll get another throwing knife kill that gets us our gunpowder gamble. Stick it to his forehead. See ya. Trip mine grenade. Stick it to his forehead. See ya. I still have nine shots of Dragon's Breath. Like, I think I can just keep spamming Dragon's Breath and it's not really going to be that big of a deal. Don't have the Catalyst, by the way. You don't have to have it either. Okay, Dragon's Breath, Trip Mine. Uh, yeah, the, the, the canon description that they had of this build is definitely true at the very least. We are one-shotting everything. I mean, for the most part. Oh, that tether's a beauty. Yeah, everything just got one shot. The tether plus the gunpowder gamble plus the trip mine, everything just instantly exploded. Okay, let's try and spawn kill this barrier. So we'll throw our throwing knives to get radiance with the ember of torches. That'll let us break its shield. And then we can just kind of continuously... We still have radiant up for 10 seconds. That's because we're continuously refreshing it with... Uh... I can't remember which artifact mod it is. It's either Flint Striker, Kindling Trigger, something like that. We shred through a shield with the uh, with our SMG right here, though. Now to see how uh, solid this really is. We're just going to throw everything at him. Going to try and make sure all these ads stay dead. I'll pop another Dragon's Breath into that guy over there. I wonder if he's... Cause if, if he's airborne... Will it not proc the ignitions as effectively? And thus not auto-load my Dragon's Breath as effectively? Oh my god, he's already half HP! Um, and I have two Heavy Bricks right there, so I can basically keep spamming Dragon's Breath. And we'll do another one, and then we'll throw the Gunpowder Gamble, and then we'll do a Throwing Knife, so we refresh our Radiant. And then we have another Dragon's Breath. Uh -oh. Another Dragon's Breath. Trying to uh, kind of play my life a little bit. Take out these wizards. I got the Gunpowder Gamble. Get a path over here a little bit. I'm going to mix in another Dragon's Breath on that guy. Wow. So, I think we killed the Meatball in like a minute maybe 45 seconds well about to he's got a little bit of hp left yeah that is by far the fastest i have ever killed that guy uh you can't see because of my webcam but we are currently about nine minutes into this grandmaster nightfall and i'm not in comms with either of my teammates we didn't necessarily optimize for this like i just i walked in this is what we were running
Oh, I didn't even... Re I wasn't even paying attention. Now I'm back at maximum Dragon's Breath ammo again. So we'll go ahead and shoot the Dragon's Breath into him to stun. And that dude's dead. Okay, I missed my throwing knives, but it's completely fine because I can just dodge and get throwing knives back. And let's try a little something something here. <laughs> wow. The, one of the best parts of this build, honestly, with some of the mod revisions that we made, is that you can just shoot Dragon's Breath ammo all day long and one-shot everything because you have Ember of Ashes, you have so much ammo because of all the reserves we have, uh, we have Heavy Ammo Finder, so we're, we're always getting bricks. These Threshers are also super annoying. I, can I just stick a Dragon's Breath into the Thresher? How will that work? And not really, not really. Do, you can blind them. Wait, you can. Oh my god. Okay, we got our dragon's breath through its thing. Dragon's breath is crazy. That damage is ridiculous. Hit that guy right there with the dragon's breath. It's gonna absolutely eviscerate him. Throw a gunpowder gamble at him. Get the trip mine off at that guy. We're spamming abilities all day long. Shammy just gifted a sub. Yeah, if you want to beat the Grandmaster Lake of Shadows quickly, this is a decent setup for it. I can tell you that much. Blast him with a quick little Dragon's Breath shot. We got a 10 gifted sub bomb while it's all going on as well from Sugar Daddy on Wheels. Thank you so much. You're a monster. And I mean that in a good way. I really need a special break. His shield gets absolutely eviscerated. Special break. All right. So the reason I wanted a special break so badly is because disorienting grenades also work on mini boss tier tormentors like this guy. So if I just shoot that at him, uh, he doesn't really work anymore. Not that I think it's really going to matter because... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? You having fun? <laughs> That's the Grandmaster Tormentor room, by the way. Nope, started early. Okay, we're gonna slow play. We're gonna slow play. Slow play, slow play, slow play. First things first, we gotta kill this barrier. Okay, we're going to slow play. For those who don't know, fun fact, if you're struggling with a Grandmaster Nightfall boss room for Grandmaster Lake of Shadows, you, there's a cheese spot you can get to if you kind of jump up on this orange cable. And then you jump up here. And then you kind of go for this thing and come to the side of it and mantle. And then you go directly above you. And then you kind of jump on top of this roof. You can get right here. The only thing that can really kill you is if the knights spit fire up here on you. If you are going to do this cheese spot, though, highly recommend you get up here before you start the boss encounter by shooting the darkness node in the middle of the map. So, uh, yeah. And then you can shoot the node from up there to start the fight. I would say the fight's perfectly manageable legitimately, though, if you want to. All I recommend doing is playing things a little slow. On my mark, we're going to absolutely nuke the boss. When you see my Dragon's Breath rocket go at him, it's go time. Just going to keep on shooting. Oh, I pulled out my Dragon's Breath a little too early. See how many adds are up in the arena? This is why normally you're not supposed to nuke him. But if you have enough damage from something like this build, then it works. By the way, that nuke was with no Well of Radiance whatsoever. First try in Lake of Shadows Grandmaster Nightfall, about a 20 minute run. No comms, no coordination, no pre-planning of loadouts. 
We just walked in with the return of the King, Young Ahamkara's spine loadout, and we absolutely waxed the GM. No cheeses, no nothing. Will it build? Absolutely yes. We did make a couple of revisions, specifically throwing on the Ember of Benevolence as opposed to the Ember of Mercy. Honestly, I liked the heavy-handed, I liked the hands-on, and I liked the double impact induction. I was a little skeptical of them in the beginning, but after playing around with the build, I can see exactly why they had us set up with them. Return of the King, baby. Thank you so much for watching. If you want your build to be reviewed in one of these videos, make sure you submit it in the Will It Build channel of the Discord server linked in the description down below, and we will check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.